video will provide a brief introduction to using mid-level visual representations for improving generalization and sample efficiency of vision water policies. It's a joint work between researchers at Berkeley, Stanford, and Facebook. The central question we try to address is how can we train good visual motor policies for functions which map images to actions that accomplish some downstream goal. It's an exciting time to work on the problem thanks to end-to-end -end deep RL, which has made it possible to train such policies to get actions directly from pixels. It's an elegant solution, but it has two main drawbacks. Training is extremely sample inefficient, sometimes requiring billions of frames to learn reasonable behaviors in even visually simple environments. And the resulting policies are brittle and can fail in unexpected and catastrophic ways when the agent is moved to a building different from where it was trained, or even if the color shifts or the lighting changes. We propose to alleviate these problems by inducing visual priors, which bias agents towards using useful, useful visual abstractions. Some examples of these abstractions are that the world is 3D, or that there are objects, and in an image, all the pixels that correspond to the object will move in some constrained manner. We find that doing so yields benefits in terms of performance, generalization, and sample efficiency. So where do we get these sort of visual abstractions from? We get these from the paper Tasconomy, which use conventional computer vision objectives and train neural networks to achieve these. Here you can see the models trained on the task dictionary of Tasconomy applied frame by frame on a test YouTube video. You can see there's a large and diverse set of visual tasks being solved here, and we use these as a mid-level dictionary of vision tasks, when we plug it into the loop for learning active agents. Before we get into the details of learning active tasks using mid-level features, let's discuss why they could possibly be helpful for generalization and sample efficiency. Effectively, these features warp the input space. When you're in raw input space, the train and test samples might not overlap if they look different, while what a feature does is warp the input so that these regions might now overlap. So when your agent sees the world through this warping lens, i.e. an abstraction, then it might have a higher chance of generalizing as it benefits from useful invariances supplied to it as priors. We then plug this into the RL loop in the simplest way possible, where instead of feeding an image to the policy, we instead extract a statistic of the image by first running it through the feature encoder and then providing that statistic to the policy. During training, we update only the policy network and not the feature extractor. We then need some sort of test bed in order to evaluate whether these features could be useful. For this, we use three different tasks, visual navigation, explore, exploration, and local planning. For visual navigation, the agent needs to navigate to some target object that's specified visually, but the agent needs to figure out what it should be navigating to during training. Second is exploration where the agent needs to navigate and explore some unknown environment using a myopic laser scanner to unlock occupancy cells. Third is local planning, sometimes called waypoint finding or point nav. The agent needs to navigate to some target coordinate that's specified non-visually. So these are the three tasks, and we implemented them in a bunch of different simulators, including Gibson, which virtualizes real buildings, 572 of them, scanned in 3D, and reconstructed with images attached. We use that as the underlying data for learning and simulation, and so the agents remain rooted in the real world. This is in contrast to using synthetic data for simulation. We use a train test split with up to 74 training buildings, depending on the experiment, and always 14 test buildings. We compare it to control groups such as Scratch, which doesn't use any visual priors, Blind, which doesn't use any sort of vision, and Non-Learning, which shows how much could be gained from just using handcrafted techniques. We also compare it to current representation learning approaches. I'm now going to try to convince you of two things. First, agents using mid-level features consistently outperform the state of the art. And second, in general, which feature performs best depends on the task. First is test set performance. What we'd like are agents which navigate to the goal gracefully and taking efficient paths. We find that for each of the tasks, Agents using mid-level vision perform significantly better on the test set, outperforming alternative approaches. They also do better along task-specific metrics. For both of these metrics, higher is better, and agents using mid-level vision, shown in the red box, perform significantly better. Agents using mid-level vision also show desirable behavior for which the reward didn't explicitly encode. They experienced roughly half as many collisions along their trajectories and produce less jerky policies. 
This is an example of a jerky trajectory that's typical of something trained from scratch. Here you can see the agent shakes left and right. We're not the first ones to notice this, and for example, Bonstel et al. sought to alleviate this problem by incorporating optimal control. We find that simply integrating better vision goes a long way towards solving the issue. And, of course, the two methods can be combined. In addition to fewer collisions and less jerk, agents using mid-level vision handled sparse rewards roughly as well as dense. It also compared favorably to methods which were explicitly designed to handle sparse rewards. And agents using mid-level vision were also robust to noisy sensors. We took away ground truth localization, and agents using mid-level vision were essentially unaffected. And if you had to choose between using a ground truth localization or using better vision, the benefits from vision were roughly four and a half times as large. So that's great, you can get better performance. And this could come from two possible locations. First, how much you learned during training, and then second, how well that generalizes to the test set. We dug into this and found that agents using mid-level vision do generalize better. They generalize better both from the training to the test set and also to episodes longer and harder than anything seen during training. In this experiment, we trained on episodes 5 meters or less and then tested on longer episodes. Agents using mid-level vision are shown here and outperformed the other methods by a large margin. The second and third best features encoded the environment dynamics and should explicitly help with this type of generalization. We found that they do help, but using better vision provided even more of an improvement. And you could combine the two methods. So that's great, you get better performance. But does it take longer to actually achieve that? We found that no. Actually, agents using mid-level vision learn with roughly an order of magnitude less data than agents trained from scratch. We measured this in a couple different ways and found it was true across tasks and environments. The second thing is that the best feature depends on the task you're trying to solve. Here were the top three features for each of the tasks. Reward is shown in parentheses. For navigation, agents using object classification performed the best. This might be because the agents needed to recognize the object, and that was the most important thing. For exploration, where the agents need to find large open spaces to explore, depth estimation is the most useful. Notice that no single feature was the best on all tasks, and none even broke the top three. But it's not that feature rankings were just noise, because the ranks were stable across the environment but within task, with a Spearman's row of 0.9 between Gibson and Habitat, and 0.8 between Gibson and the real world. So we conclude that which feature performs well depends heavily on the task and not so much on the environment. So that's great. If you know what task you're trying to do, then you can pick a feature that performs well and it will fairly reliably give good performance on your task. But what do you do if the task is unknown or changing? In this case, we propose that a set of features could be more general in terms of perception, and we proposed a specific example called the Max Coverage Feature Set, which we detail in the paper. We evaluate, evaluated it using our testbed from before, for sets of size 1, 2, 3, and 4, and found that it essentially conferred the benefits of mid-level vision, performing comparably to the best task-specific feature and outperforming the alternative approaches. We've also found that using mid-level vision made training easier. We didn't have to do a lot of common things that we normally need to do to get things to work in RL. Notably, we also didn't need to do anything for domain adaptation. So these feature extractors were trained for some offline data set, and then we just plopped them in. We didn't do any sort of domain adaptation for the extractors, and so our performance here should be considered a lower bound on how well mid-level vision could possibly do. We have a lot more on our website, including demos where you can check out trajectories of agents trained for any of the different tasks using any of the different features. You can also compare them qu quantitatively by looking at the training and test curves. We also include examples of agents generalizing to the real world. In this case, the agent was trained to navigate to an orange cube in the Gibson environment, and then we applied the policy to a real turtle bot too. Here you can see the agent navigating in the computer science building to the real orange cube, even in the presence of white distractor cubes, which weren't present during training. We also tried this for different policies, such as those trained to do point navigation. Here the agent is navigating in a cluttered environment at the target point. In summary, we showed that agents using mid-level visual representations can gain critical advantages over learning tabula rasa. The policies can be trained using existing RL frameworks, and they exhibit strong test set performance without reward engineering. They generalize better than existing approaches, and can train 
in a sample efficient manner using an order of magnitude less data. However, the choice of representation depends on the task, and when the task is unknown or changing, a set of features could provide more general perception. We show an example of such a set, the max coverage feature set, that provides the benefits of mid-level vision. All this and more is on our website, perceptual.actor.